Hi, hello and welcome to AMZ TV. That's if you're watching this on YouTube or I'm as alive if you're listening to it on my podcast. Can you guess who I have here with me today? It's Kepi Ekpenyong Basi Iyan, popularly known as Kepi. Hello, Kepi. Kepi, put your hands down. Hello, darling. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> surprise, surprise. You know, I have got Kepi with me. Oh, my God. No, 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 no. Amazing. This is so amazing. You know, I mean, the fact that I'm actually looking into your face, smiling at you. And, and this time I'm not slapping you, you know, remember? <laughs> I know, the last time, right? You were slapping yeah. me. Flesh, flesh, flesh and blood as the evil one. I was hitting you around and then you killed me eventually, I think. That's how that story Don't goes. give it out yet. They haven't seen that part. Oh, really? <laughs> 20 no, but, Yeah, you haven't no, seen no. that. <laughs> no, no they, they have. Bad. Some people have. Some people have. But, but yeah. it started with us. Um, oh my God, there's just, so, I've, I've known this man for a long time. You're so dear to me. I'm actually almost close to tears because I haven't seen you in a long, long time. That's so tickly though. <laughs> you just tickled me just now. No, but it's true. And so I'm oh so excited. Kepi, oh, how true. are you? I'm very well, thank you. You haven't changed one minute. Oh, you know, flat that's what's it amazing gets about everywhere. you. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I mean, you haven't changed very much. You haven't changed. Oh, you know, and it's annoying to note that you haven't <laughs> had a weight either. It's annoying. Yeah, you should cut that picture of this ancient <laughs> grandmother bent over a walking stick, <laughs> you know, or something, you know. Oh, God. Honestly, you know, it's so good. Thank you, thank you. You don't, yeah. you don't look bad yourself, except I think uh, now you've gone full bald, bald, right? Because the last time I saw you, I don't think. Have you always been bald? Well, it's always been low. You know, yes. yeah, I've always wanted really low, but low, uh, now yeah. it's a bit lower because uh, this way you don't quickly see the gray hair sprouted. So, <laughs> um, so this is my anti-aging strategy, you know. Yeah. Wait down really, really low. And yeah. then you really need to strain, you know, to see whether the hair is gray or something. But you know, it's working. Oh, yeah. come on. You look great. You what? really look good. You really look good. So yeah. um, I, you know, I don't even know what I'm going to ask you because anything I'm gonna ask you you've been asked before. So um, but I've known this man since um I've known let's not you. take it too far away. Let's start. Let's start. Let's just backtrack to Tears for Love. Tears for Love. Tears for yeah. Love. But I knew you in Ripples, yeah. though. Um, we then you're giving Ripples. away my age. Well, again, come yeah, on now. Yeah. We're not. We're, we're still we're in our early 30s. Wink, wink. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. So it started for me um, on Ripples. We were both in Ripples. Ran. I was yeah, on Ripples. We're both on Ripples now. Yeah. You're on Ripples as well now. Yes, yes. You know, and we ran Ripples for five years. Yeah. And we ran Ripples on NTA as right. the only broadcast out in Nigeria. So everybody had to go home and watch us. Of course. And I, and I think I think we did good. We did noble. We did now. great. Are you kidding? Yeah. You know, people we had a good run. Um, yeah. And, and that's why, for instance, when finally we, we came together again on um, Tears, Tears for Love, Love, everybody wanted to see what Misty were brought up to, you know. <laughs> but you, 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 you were a very good girl on that job. You know what I mean? I mean, you were the lovely wife. Well, of course, I am a lovely person. That shouldn't be surprising. Yeah, right. Tell now. me about it. Oh, come no? on now. You know, I, I'm a I good only, girl. I only became nasty. Mm. Because of you, I think. I think somebody had eyes for you. And the only way to raise me out of the picture was to destroy me so that you come running. And that's what happened. (laughs) You left me, finally. I left you. Yeah, towards the end, I almost killed you. Now, remember I rescued you from committing suicide? I know. After you committed that big scene. There was, oh, okay, you know what? Okay, guys, again, if you're just tuning in, welcome. I'm talking to one of my favorite people in the whole world. I'm talking to Kepi uh, Basi Iyang, 
properly known. Everyone knows him as Kepi. Kepi, 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 Kepi. Yeah, everyone calls me Kepi. Your name, Kepi. But anyway, so we're talking about this movie we're both in. It's called Tears for Love. For those of you who haven't seen it, um, I'll try and see if I can put something up, if I can find it. But if not, do a research. Um, so Tears for Love it was about this couple, the two of us. We have the daughter and him being a good That's husband, something. a good provider, and uh, me being the good homemaker, you know, gave up all my, my career. I, I think I trained as a doctor or something, and I left it all to be with this man. And good then guy, he lost dude. his job. And then, yeah, you know, as a good wife, trying to, I remember I ran to your friend to help, that silly yes. friend of yours. That was Fred, wasn't it? It was Fred. No, Fred was it Fred? It was Fred Amata, it was bad Fred. Everybody was on that job, though. That was Fred, that was <laughs> KOK, you know. And um, the last time Dolly. I saw you, There was Dolly. And the, there was Dolly, and then there was... Alex. Alex of C4. <laughs> That's the guy who said, okay, I'm going to rescue you. I'm going to give you some money. Right. Yeah, right, right. Remember? I do. Yeah. I do, I do. And that's why I was going to kill you, you know. Very possessive. Possessive? Ugh. Why? I, mean, that's it. I, I think I felt betrayed, I mean. It was but more why? of a betrayal. I know you felt betrayed, and then, and that was what got to her. You know, the character I played, Rookie, I remember. Rookie, Rookie exactly. <laughs> I played the character, yes, you remember. Rookie. Yes, yeah. and it was that betray. You betrayed me, because you should have believed I would never, ever choose another man over you. No, guess what? What? You know, at some point, when we had our little domestic, uh, issue. I, I became blind. Remember? Oh yeah, that's true. That the was the story. Yeah, yeah. Then yeah. I regained my sight. Guess where? In front of the house of the man <laughs> you were with. <laughs> of all places to regain your sight. <laughs> it had to it was be a there. Same, It was as if destiny had to catch up with you sometime. <laughs> gotcha. I mean, you were too good. And then you felt really bad. Yes, yeah, so that was that betrayal. And then you almost killed yourself. Right. But after the movie had hit the streets, so to speak, everybody said I was lucky they didn't die, they would have killed me. Most of the viewers, you know, they had empathized with their position. They, they, they they're falling for you to face death. They loved you, they loved your character. They forgot they I was did. a victim. I, they did. They kept on warning me. I mean, this was me on the streets walking. I see, I'm very lucky that girl did not die. I would have killed you. Ah! Okay, was it? It. No, so, no, no. I remember. So we because, did good. We did really good together. Maybe. Because we made people believe believe us, you know. But and everyone actually thought, well, that's what people do when they watch people on, you know, on the screen, big screen. But we had or, something together, yeah. Yes, it was like, oh, you you guys have. I'm like, this man has got his look. We're just no, but we did have something together, together as characters. A chemistry. No, yeah, we had to have. Um, something together as characters. We were in love as characters. So, yes, our know. characters, yes. So we did have something together, whether you <laughs> liked it or not. But not as... <laughs> as not as Kepi and Ameze. <laughs> yeah, but as characters. Yeah, as we were characters, in love with yeah. each other. And I felt betrayed. Don't forget, you had, you had that little kid for me. You know, so it was, um, meant something, you know, for us I worked that hard to, to make one child. You know, was, <laughs> we loved each other, and uh, it was a betrayal, I think. It was a betrayal. Then I was quite, I really must have been in love with you because, I, you know, we, we pushed all that behind us and we continued with life. Remember? You know, the story was, um, and they lived happily ever after. Remember? Yes, and they lived that's happily ever after. after. Yeah. Yes, that's what Great that, stories. That's what, that's what great stories are made of. Yeah, and it still it still lingers, you know. For uh, most people, okay, guess what? If you remember, the film made such a hit in the name. You know, I think it's more because of you, your name, and then there's once I went into Benin, and you know, it was it was unpleasant for me, honestly. They were actually going to beat me up again. Why? Know? After a while, I don't know, everybody everybody took to you, it was you. They, no, people came to me though, and I, I'm remember, no, my no, God. no, 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 no. No, people Are came to me, say, no, people came, they're like, oh my God, thank, you know, that's why I meant, it was both sides, you had some that were like, 
you do sacrifices <laughs> for them and they never women will come to me and men men came to me and say you know sometimes people can separate you know you shouldn't have taken him back that was yeah people said exactly that. yeah exactly people said that to yeah me. because you i know i know I, I know i hit you at some point i wasn't, yeah, I I wasn't so. supposed to hit you but... i was like you hit me you hit me yes i, I think, think i, I remember you. that I remember. yes i remember i hit you and uh, oh, a lot of people on. warned me severally it did that it was a state was because of that pity that we didn't find you again in nigeria you know it was the same um, oh God! Please stop. Went, After that, we did another movie. Stop! Just stop. No, I know it was like it was like. Um, I did. We did like three other wife? movies, or so. Where's your wife? Where's your wife? Where's your wife? You kept on asking me. It's true. It's true. It's true. You know, and, you know. I mean, see, you were my wife at that time. Oh, it I was mean, a serious thing. Know. Oh, it was no. It was a serious <laughs> thing. Let me even tell you what happened. I didn't okay. know where Mister. Is it Unica? You went to Uni University of Calabar, right? Yes, I was. <laughs> That's how I knew you were, you were Mr. Unicorn. Is it Mr. Unicorn? Are you serious? Yes, I was Mr. Unicorn. Because they the came first. to me like, I married Mr. Unicorn. I'm like, who is Mr. Unicorn? I must have had, but that period, people, people came to me like, you married Mr. Unicorn. They heard that I married ah, Mr. Unicorn. He's a playboy. I'm like, Mr. Unicorn. Who, who is Mr. Unicorn? They're like, kept Are you me. serious? Is that yes. what they said about me? Yes. People came to me. That they didn't warn you. They, yes. That I married Mr. Unicorn. I'm like, me? I didn't know. I mean, so that was bad level. That was serious bad level. Yeah. 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 I didn't have That's... to dig into my past. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was Mr. Unicorn. It was uh, That's how I knew. adventures. That's how I knew that you were Mr. Unicorn. Because you were like, ah, you married that boy. Play boy. Ah, you married Mr. Unicorn. No, 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 no. He can't be faithful. But I was a good guy. I mean, when I was married to you, I was good. You said what? When I was married to you, I was a good guy. Yeah, well, so what turned you? I said, I said, you married, I married you and I was a good guy. Oh, okay, yeah. So I made you a good guy. Because <laughs> I'm like, okay. Because I was thinking you married, when you married me, you were a good guy. And then you changed. So you're saying it was after that when you married me, then, you know. Yeah, I know but people I think watching now, people watching now are going to be so, they, they'll be scratching their heads. But the story, the story generally reflects what happens in life. You know, so I think what I what I'm taking away from this is that I go through a hard time. You get it? I go mm -hmm. through a hard time, and then I take it out from the person I'm closest to, and that was you, you know. And um, I hated being dependent on you. I needed you at that time for life. You were my eyes. You know, I mean, I couldn't do anything on my own, and everything. I was broke, and. Uh, Somehow I felt the last nail was when you cheated on me. Okay. And, um, we I need almost, to clarify that. Yeah. Rookie did not cheat on you. She couldn't. You <laughs> came in when she was telling the stupid uncle of hers or some... Oh, who, mine. I, I can't remember. Yeah. But it was, I think, her dad's friend or let's not talk about dad's friend because they're stupid like that. But anyway. I think it was a... I can't remember. Yes. But anyway, so she, she, it was like she got tempted... But then she's like, no, I can't do it. And that's when you came in. She had already told him no. But of course, you regain your side. Just, at, I mean, really convenient. The wrong time. For all I know, you probably were pretending because you didn't want to work. I don't know. All along, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See yourself. And maybe that's what a lot of other viewers thought because they really hated me. They hated me for a really they long time. Right? They did. They did. But it was good. You see, so you, you never really left. No, no, they hated you for You've a long time. You've always been somewhere around me. Yeah. Somewhere. Anyway, so that means we did a convincing job. We did. We made people believe. I was so believe. proud of it. I was so proud of the job. And, and that, was, that was a good, it was a good movie. It was really a good movie. It was one of yes, the first it movies. It was my first. And I think that's what is, I think it's because of the success of uh, that one, it inspired the making of Flesh and Blood. Remember? And well, that was your wicked inventiveness. Yes. yes, and then you married. Yeah. And then you, you married me again in Flesh and Blood. They married you okay. again. I married me again. And I loved and you. Away. You were a good girl, but you had a sister who was evil. Mm. Blame it on the woman. Blame it on the woman. She didn't. She didn't hold. Oh, but she hated you. 
Yeah, but she no, didn't. Amazing, it, was, it was more. It was more. Your sister hated your old children. Envious of your old children. Jealous of your children. And that's okay. So she to. Yeah. But she didn't put that's a gun to your head life. anyway to go to run away with her. How could you break Jesse's heart? Did I, did I it do that? It was Jesse and Jackie. <laughs> Jesse was a good one. And Jackie was. Yeah, it was a good one. one. Honestly, he's so nice. Oh, what's the third one? What's the fourth one going to be now? It's not going to be any know. Zoom, Zoom, Zoom movie making story. It's not going to be like this. It's going to be side by side, you and I. No, no, that's not it. It's hand in hand, you and I. <laughs> hand in hand, you and so I. Good. Yeah, that's how it goes. Yeah, that's how it goes. So we're going to oh do my that. God. Oh my I'm God. I'm waiting for you. Yeah. <laughs> This is great. It's so nice to catch up with you. Everybody. It is. It yeah. is. Are you kidding? It's just I'm. I'm like flying high here. Seriously, I'm really flying high. Um. So, Kepi, um, I saw you in a movie recently. I know that movie is probably I don't know maybe five years or even more. I saw you in ninety three days. Well, that movie was is four years old now. It's four years old. Well, I saw you not too long ago, and yeah. I was like, oh my god, this is Kepi. You, I. It was great, Mr. Sawyer, right, Mr. Sawyer? Yes, Patrick Sawyer. Patrick Sawyer. So you are the... <laughs> that, story, that story was quite appealing to all of us. That's mm -hmm. the foremost was a real-life story. Mm -hmm. We're playing real-life characters. Mm -hmm. So um, if you noticed, I wore a slight Liberian accent. I did. I, I cut that. Yeah, now Patrick, Patrick Sawyer was um, somewhat of a diplomat, you know. And the story in Nigeria at the time was that he was wicked. You know, because he came into Nigeria, we we're all a bit of Ebola. But during the research into my character, I realized that uh, back home in Liberia, he had been exposed to the virus because he was taking care of his sister, oh. who had been exposed earlier, and she eventually died. Oh, no. And Somehow he had me back home in America because he lived in Minnesota with his wife yes, and two daughters. Yeah, I saw, yeah, but he lived in yeah. Minnesota. Yeah, and uh, he hadn't seen them in a while. And so he lived in denial. And he came into Nigeria, we're not too sure why, but we think because of all those miracle churches that we have in Nigeria, it was open that we mm. come in here and somebody would say, I'm Brakadabra, and he'll be totally healed, and he would go home and see his family. But he was here for 93 days. No, 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 he was here on the fourth day, I think he died in Nigeria, you know, and on the night where Dr. Adadepo he was, I finally managed to convince him that uh, he had been exposed. He submitted, submitted to treatment, and I think he lost hope, and that's why he died. And that's what we try to portray from true life reflections, you know, uh, some of the characters were lucky because they had uh, the real life people talk to them through the situation. You know, uh, it was a beautiful story. You we worked with the ambulance drivers who actually worked the situation. Right. We walked out of real life situations, real life location. Uh, Patrick Sawyer died in the room, the actual Patrick Sawyer died in. Mm -hmm. And um, it, was, it, was, it, was quite, it was quite meticulous a process. It was really nice. It was really okay. nice. Yeah. And then I think we were celebrated when we went uh, to Canada for the International Film Festival because of right. uh, 93 days. Uh, Nigeria was celebrated. It was a wonderful it, job. It was. Yeah, it was. I think, and I think all of us somehow were proud to have been part of it. You should be. It was. It was a good. It was. It was good when I saw it. And did I you cry it. at any point? I did. I did. And where? Well, I did when you died. I did know before you died, I did when you were sick because I kind of like, you portrayed the fact that it was like a drowning man. You kind of knew you were going to die. You see what I'm saying? But he was still trying to fight it. Do you see what I'm saying? Yes, that was a denial. It, it, it was a denial. It came through. And I saw that. And yeah. I think it's knowing you because it was like, I don't know. There's something about seeing people that you know and care for. But I mean, it, it was it was just great acting. I loved. It. <coughs> I could I recognize some of the other actors, um, and it was just quite, quite a number of great actors on the set. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
Mm-hmm. Bimbo Manuel. Bimbo Manuel, you know. Everybody. Um, everybody was a bad job. It was, well, it was lovely. Such it was lovely. Tinamba. You remember Tinamba? Yes. Yes. Okay. I yeah. think she, she was married to Danny Glover, you know. Yeah, yeah. I did. Right. I saw that, yeah. And then, that's true. Danny was there. That... <laughs> He was a good job as well. It was great. It was a great it was job. Lovely. It was, it was at good. Some, some, so I was at some radio station we were interviewed in Cannes, Georgia. Danny Glover was going around saying he was Nigerian. You know, he was really excited to have identified with such a beautiful uh, project. Uh, it was unbelievable. Uh, um, it was encouraging for all of us as well. Right. Uh, you know, I mean, it was wonderful. I think it was nice. Yeah. It was really good. It was, was uh, and, it, and, yeah. it, and it showed. It, um, it, was a it, it had to show because there was a deliberate attempt to take care of the actors on set. So we all relaxed. We worked uh, long hours, but we were really, really comfortable. We didn't realize how much we had invested emotionally in that story. But, he, but you know, at the end of the day, we're happy with what we saw. You talk to them, done better. You know how it is with actors. You know, you well, you know well. this. You always think, you know, you're your worst critic. So that's okay. But we saw it. Yes, it yes. is. So one thing I want to ask you now, we're in this pandemic, the Corona. Put your hand down. When this Corona pandemic. <laughs> I'm his wife. Okay. Want to tell him that. Okay. So. Um, how how does it compare with Ebola? How was Ebola, you know, during that scare in Nigeria? How was it? And now with the corona, which is scarier? I think it was Ebola. You know, the pictures we saw of victims, you know, terrified everybody. You know, there was blood everywhere. And uh, it was as if death was setting, you know. But with um, corona, somehow I think we're slightly more relaxed more comfortable because a lot of us were involved you know the media had nothing but sad stories you know 500 people that were infected here there and yonder and then there was so much information and then somehow we became very comfortable with the information the information wasn't as scary we thought of it as malaria at some point mm. you know and at some point we stopped being afraid hmm. But then um, we had control measures, you know, put in place by government, like the lockdowns. And it was as if death was around the corner, you know. Every day you go, look in your wardrobe, you see clothes you think you never wear, you know. Yeah. Uh, you have some money in your pocket and you can't buy a jack, you can't go out and buy anything. Shops were locked down and everything. You're looked. talking about the corona. This, the this corona, t- yeah, yeah, lockdown. Right. Yeah. right. And we're all really, really uncomfortable because of the uncertainty. Right. Know? So for us, uh, I think for those of us who were actively creative with our minds, we looked forward to the end hmm. so that we could reinvent ourselves. You know, for most great creatives, we never allow anything put us down. Um, we only feel put down when we don't have that latitude to walk and move around. But and honestly speaking, uh, uh, all the telecoms, telecommunication firms were making a lot of money because all of us were just talking, talking mm. to each other, encouraging people, wow. um, getting all kinds of news from all over the world. You know, Nigerians okay. are quite itinerant. We're everywhere. So you, you, you wake up one morning and somebody's reaching you from Spain and Italy and all the countries where people are dying and you're saying, Oh, thank God it's not really as bad because wow. this person is alive and so on. So, so, so there was a lot of hope also, you know, in the pandemic because somehow we knew we'd pull through. Hello? Um, I'm still here. I'm here. Oh, okay, okay. So that's, that's, that's what it is. It wasn't so bad. It's just the uncertainty, you know. But here okay. we are today. I'm talking to you. Well, yeah, Zoom has made us all closer now. You know, Zoom has, I mean, everyone's Zooming, you know. It's making it, um, like, you know, and for me, I, I think I think it's so impersonal. It's, yeah, it's a stopgap. It's there, it's bridging a little gap. But, you know, for me, I'd rather be talking to you across the table. Of you know? course. Naturally, yes. Yeah. But do you think it's, um, with the lockdown and what have you, do you think that affected the entertainment business, did it, did it affect it? Oh, of course it did. 
Mm. Of course it did. You know, um, one of the prominent, should I say, um, protective measures deployed world over is social distances. So for social distancing, for us here in our industry, we're usually up close and really personal because we engage, you know, we interact with other players on set. Uh, and sometimes, for instance, if we had to reflect uh, some amount of emotions, we, we, we really, really would become up close and personal, you know. So, and there's the fear. There's a fear of contamination. So I use the word contamination. Initially, all of us were so scared. We're right. really, really scared. And one of the reasons why the industry shut down was because we have particular professionals on the set, like the makeup artists. Uh, they clean you up, they make you up, and then there's that close proximity. Um, and then you know how it is. I mean, the viewers end up seeing two of us on set. But we have the entire crew up there behind us. And Mm -hmm. uh, that would have abused everything, everything that had to do with social distancing and all of that. And we're all afraid that perhaps we might, uh, um, we might be exposed and we might not have adequate uh, treatment readily, you know. And because we didn't know very, very much about it very early, we're even more afraid then. But right now, I think we're taking more, we're taking risks because we've gone back on set. So we oh, yeah. Yeah. So the, the we're not, we're not as we're not as afraid. We're not as afraid as That's when we were a couple of months ago. Yeah. Right, right. I think it's the same thing here. the The world is starting life, to open back up. Life, life is kicking in. Yeah. Yeah. Life, life has to kick in. The only difference right. is um, we're conscious of the virus. We know it's there. We know we have to leave the virus. So we live in life around it as much as we can. You know, because life has to kick you. I mean, it's it's terrible. You know, it's it's um, I don't know. It's it's as if we, at some point, were totally dependent on isolation. Mm. At some point, you know, it was it was like you couldn't trust anybody. You know, okay. and all that. Yeah, right. right. You know, a lot of us were apprehensive, but now we're more confident. We're bolder. We're going out. Uh, in Lagos. We haven't resumed um, social activities uh, like like church services, uh, like nightclubs, like going out to eat in the restaurant and stuff like that. That hasn't resumed yet. They're uh -huh. working out the modalities, but very soon I'm sure they will work out something that will be favorable for everybody. You know, right. but basically it's nice. You know, it's a process through life. We're all contemplative, honestly. We were deep thinkers. Well, yeah. <laughs> Right, no, the, if, was, if, there's anything, if there's anything the lockdown did, I think for most people is to appreciate right. for people around you, to appreciate the most important things, you know, because it made people right. get really reflective, you know, and just inwards and also around you. Like, you can't take a day, don't take any day for granted. You know, every day is a gift. So I think it made everyone kind of sober, you know, if you will, so. Yeah, it was so sober. Like I said, wow. when you go in your wardrobe, you see your clothes, and wow. you wonder where you went. Sometimes, a lot of people were home two, three days, and you wouldn't take a bath because they'll never leave home. And yeah, it was <laughs> it was frustrating. It really was at that time, but hmm. it's nice. Uh, it's even nicer that um, lots of people didn't really know didn't die. You know, so death was far away. You know, okay. good. Good. So politics, are you thinking of going into politics? <coughs> Maybe you have, I didn't even know. You didn't tell your wife? Um, hey, you did. You know, no, no, I, you know, somehow, I think fundamentally, all of us are politicians because we're all affected by policies generated by the politicians. So um, it depends on what side of the divide you want to be on. I mean, you want to generate the policies or you want to be affected by the policy? <laughs> you think you have anything <laughs> to offer? And um, sometime, I think at, at some point in your life, you gravitate towards wanting to give back, 
Yes. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then so sometimes you begin to look at actually being actively participant. You know, you say to yourself, oh, well, I think I've been through enough of the experiences of life. I think I can contribute a little. You know, I can elevate particular situations. I can impact positively here, there. And then we try, you know. So, Kepi, as a politician, um, I don't know exactly how to describe myself. Amazing. I really don't know. Um, I know I know. I function, you know, somehow. I function, um, how would I put it? Uh, presently, I, I sit on a board. I sit uh -huh. on the federal board. Uh -huh. I sit on the board of the National Theme and Video Services Board. Oh, you board do? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do. Nice. But you see, for me, it's, 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 it's quite... Um, is most appropriate because I am sitting administratively on the board that affects my industry, the industry in which I work. You know, so um, there, like I said before, some of our voices are being heard. You know, um, and even though we do not affect the executive, we just make a contribution at that level. Um, the executive director of the board is also a theater, so. He appreciates some of the suggestions we make at the board. And the industry, I think, is better for it because a few of us are on the board, a few of us who are uh, players in the industry, like um, Jacques Silva is on the board. Okay. Yeah, then today, Kilani okay. is the chairman of the board. Oh, nice. Yeah, so we now have others. players on, on the board. Great. Yeah, we have a lot of players on the board. Yeah. And so it, 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 we begin to... We begin to think from within. Yes, we, we, it's important. Yeah, we project it. It's 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 a bit. It's quite interesting. Though. I mean, honestly, it's quite interesting because of the diversity yeah. of your colleagues on the board. Uh, uh, some of them are just typical politicians, you know, and we can't understand the difference between action and cost mm -hmm. and stuff like that. <laughs> we don't understand what we go through when yeah. we're out there on the field, right. you know, but we do. And then we have to be, because of our exposure, we're certainly very patient people. I think we're more patient than the politician that's created. Create what we do is that we take the time and explain the processes to them. We try to explain to them why it is imperative that certain strategies are deployed, especially when it comes to protecting our industry right. in our space. You know, uh, most of us are vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And then, um, I think I think somehow um, we're vulnerable because we want to be other people. We're running away from being Nigerian. We want to be British. We want to be American. We want to be Indian. We want to be other people outside ourselves. And and then sometimes when you realize how impactful the audiovisual media is, you will know how much it can actually affect life, and it could affect life negatively as much as it could affect by its positive. The medium is a vehicle, you know, of, of uh, change of some sort. So we need to protect it and protect the territorial integrity of the country, um, protect our rich cultural heritage as well. You know what I mean? I mean, I mean, no Nigerian will walk in front of the camera naked. You know what I mean? We're not that adventurous, but if we encourage it, we'll have a few of our players Doing that, and then, I mean, what will we be telling our children and our children's children? So we need to protect that. We need to protect the future. No, the cultural integrity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the cultural integrity of the people. Yeah. Basically, that's what we're looking out for. Right. For the board, you know, oh. because the board is a regulatory one. So, so are you sure. are you appointed to those positions, or you have to run an election? No, we're just appointed, so we're lucky. We don't have to run campaigns. Or or, um, yeah, because I was like, you've got my vote. I mean, you, you, you just... Oh, thank you, Shigo. Oh, yeah. No, of course now. We come from the same cloth. Yeah. <laughs> it's so yeah. nice. It's nice. It's yeah. nice. And sometimes, you know, sometimes when I just catch your face unconsciously, I just become shy. Okay. <laughs> no one's buying that, Kepi, stuff. Oh, you can butter, butter, but that's shy. No, but I actually believe that you're shy. I have seen you. I know you. No, 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 no. I am I'm actually shy. Shy, right. yes, you are. I just have I a lot of I've known, I've seen you. I've seen you shy. 
Are you and serious? You try, to, you try to cover it up, but I have seen you. I Please do. Don't, don't tell anybody this. They won't believe no, no, no one's going to be. So hard. No, it's between us. Nobody's it's hearing. Not. Nobody's listening. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> <You're> right. <laughs> that oh, will work. <laughs> so, um, yeah. The best. yeah. So you know you are butter now. You know what is butter? Butter ham. Ajena. No, that's not true. No, oh, uh, please, it is true. We know that. Okay, if in case I know you, you want to leave this. You know, I come from the streets. I've got some street cred. We know, eh? We know. <laughs> Even amongst us, there we kind of know Kepi's kind of butter. So um, where I'm going with this is um, your. <clears throat> First of all, you grew up in that very reserved part of, you know, Lagos. But I recently found out that you went to um, Government College, Ojo. Yes, first time. For that, I know. I didn't know that. I well, how did you know that? How did you find that out? For a long time, but I did. Me, I wanted to. You have to. Are you serious? No, I did, but I didn't. I ended up, I schooled in Canada, which I, I like my school. But I remember Government College, Ojo. They always had. Beautiful people from there. Ah, so many like of them are so, so many of them, so many of us are everywhere in the world, but Nigeria. Yeah. So many. Um, it was very popular. In my set, yeah. where I think in the 1974 set, mm -hmm. which is my set, mm -hmm. 74 to 79, mm -hmm. we produced about 50 doctors. Oh, wow. And out of that number, 40 of them are out of this. Mm. Everywhere else but Nigeria. You it know, was very popular. I wanted to be in that school so bad, but we oh, moved. Good. We have, um, I, ha I belong to three very active and vibrant WhatsApp groups. Mm, I can't believe school. it. Can yeah, believe. and uh, it's every day. I mean, we run into, we run our chats into thousands and thousands and thousands. Oh my goodness. Wow. You know, it's, it's so lovely. Sorry. <laughs> Did you just, <laughs> you just no. tell me sorry for not getting in? No, no, it's uh, I have some pop ups. On the oh, screen. okay, and no one sees that. Kepi, you didn't see it, eh? no, you know, you're 35 years old, no one's <laughs> popping up on your screen, okay? <laughs> we are 35, okay? No one sees it unless you're sharing your screen, and you're not, no, I'm not sharing my screen with anybody yeah. but you, so nobody sees yeah. it. Right, nobody says. All right, thank you. That's quite reassuring. <laughs> so Excellent. where I'm going with this is, um, I know your dad was a medical doctor, right? Yes, he was. <laughs> yeah, I, again, I heard that. Even back then, I know. Um, what got you into acting? Or how did he, was he supportive of <clears throat> it? Mm. Okay, the, 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 the simple truth is, as a growing kid, I wanted to be so many things. He was not just a medical doctor, he was a military doctor, he was a doctor in the army, you know? And um, so as I was growing up, I wanted to be many things. But I wasn't good with my sciences, so there was this big red X where medicine was concerned. And I got to school, my first degree was in linguistics. Mm. My master's in international law and diplomacy. Okay. And my career all through, I Okay, we froze. Hello. Ah, oh, you gotta love this freezing. Oh, he just froze. No. Come back. Oh, he froze, people. Oh, I just lost Kepi. I'm sure he's going to try and come back. So we're going to wait. But while we're waiting, so, um, for those of you coming in, um, if you're watching on YouTube, this is AMZ TV, and I'm your lovely and very personable <laughs> host, Amezes, my name. 
And then if you're listening to my podcast, it's Amaz Alive. So again, if you're new here, please remember to subscribe to this channel and um, share my videos. I have guests coming on from different um, industry. Right now I'm featuring um, a lot of Nollywood stars and celebrities that I have worked with in the past. For those of you who know me and been following me, yes, it is Ameze. I'm back on your screen and I'm um, having some of my colleagues just coming to talk and we reminisce about all that's been going on. So I had Kepi on and for whatever reason, um, we lost him, but I'm sure he's going to sign back on. So um, again, if you um, if you're an old as an old friend, been with my channel, please um, remember to always share my videos. And if you're new, please subscribe, share, comment, and share, share, share my video. I'm also on social media. I'm as a superstar on Instagram and I'm as a superstar on Twitter. I have a Facebook page. It's Ameze Ameze. And of course, my podcast I mentioned earlier on, it's Ameze Live. I really would appreciate your support. Please keep supporting me so I can bring this lovely guest and, you know, just entertain, inform, and um, keep you abreast of what's happening, updates. So when Kepi and I were talking earlier, we're talking, and there's a lot of banter between us. So if you got lost in it, let me put things in perspective for you. Um, he and I have known each other way back a long time. Um, we started with Ripples. That's where I first knew Kepi. We worked together. Ripples was one of those uh, pioneer um, soap operas and ran for about five years. I think so, about five years. Kepi said five years, so I believe it. And then after that, we maintained friendship. You know, again, that's how it is when you're in that industry you know there's that love and camaraderie and we're all supporting each other and um, encouraging each other and then um, I got the part in uh, Opa Williams movie um, called Tears for Love and that's the one we're talking about being married you know Kepi's like you're my wife and and that movie was really so big it was big that was my first movie um, that I starred in and I think that was his first. I'm not sure. I haven't had a chance to ask him. But anyway, um, it was really good. It was a lovely movie. We played a married couple, happily married, but things happened and tested their love. But eventually they found their way back to each other. And after the movie, like you heard him, people hated him for a long time. And this is because in the movie, um, he took out his frustrations and anger on his wife, Ruki, that's the character I played. And somewhere along the line, I felt betrayed, he felt betrayed. But anyway, they salvaged, you know, the relationship and um, lived happily ever after. So, um, but yeah, uh, people took sides. People took sides against him, a lot of people did. And I also had people tell me that the character I played is not true to life, meaning, there are not a lot of women that will make sacrifices for their men. And I beg to differ then, and I beg to differ now. Yes, women sacrifice to, I think it's kept texting me, women sacrifice every time. No, um, <laughs> yeah, he's going to try and sign back in. Women sacrifice for men every time. Are you kidding me? You need to go watch that movie, okay? It's called Tears for Love, and uh, I stare in it. Also, Kepi and so many other um, uh, Nollywood stars now. And then after that, again, we um, my movie, which I produced, and um, I was the showrunner of that movie, and that's Flesh and Blood. And Flesh and Blood blew all boundaries. You know, just went, I'm just grateful to God. It just... There were so many first in broke. So I played the um, enviable role um, of playing um, twins, twin girls, twin sisters, yes. And Kepi played a character. He was engaged to one of the sisters 
and then he married the other sister and it was just a total mess if you haven't seen that movie go ahead and see flesh and blood i actually have it here on my channel free so go ahead and watch it and let me know what you think okay and then after that we did another movie so they kept pairing us together so when you hear Kepi say, you're my wife, you're my wife, I've married you so many times, that's what he means. We kept, you know, doing movies together because people thought, you know, we had great chemistry. Uh, that's a good thing. He's a wonderful, wonderful actor. You cannot be with Kepi and not laugh. He just makes you laugh over and over and over again. I don't think, I think I've only seen Kepi angry one time. And even then, when I came into the scene, he just calmed down. He's, he's such a gentleman. He is. He really is. And uh, lovely family. Um, I'm hoping that he can sign back in because I actually, before the interview, I got a chance to say hello to his pretty wife. And they've been together forever. So I was going to ask him what the secret to their relationship is. Because he's been married a long time with um, um, his children. And um, that's a lovely thing. It's always admirable when you talk to men in the industry who miraculously, people would say, but have been able to keep a family together. It's no easy feat, but it's the same thing with a woman, you know, because um, sometimes people can't separate acting from real life. So I was curious to pick his brain and maybe his wife's brain too. Like, how have you kept, you know, kept this relationship going and even waxing stronger. Um, shortly before the recording, I saw the, the two of them talk to each other. It was just beautiful. It's just lovely. You know, you got to celebrate uh, couples that are making it and are happy. So, um, yeah. And then Kepi. Um, Kepi was in 93 Days. That movie actually just blew me away. It's a movie based on... Uh, Ebola, the Ebola outbreak that was in Africa. And so I asked him what, which was carrier, the Ebola outbreak or Corona. And you all heard him, he said Ebola. And then so they did a movie of the origin of Ebola in Nigeria. And actually went to the Toronto International Film Festival in Toronto. Yes. And, um, and we're talking and then, you know, he was just going to tell me how him being a child of a medical doctor, well, you know, read parents, um, dived into um, the acting industry because that's something that's usually parents, especially when you come from some type of um, parts of the world, but I think it's kind of universal, though. Not a lot of people buy into the acting bug, you know, entertainment, because they think it's not a real job. Well, that's starting to change these days, but it wasn't always like that. So I actually wanted to discuss that with him. But alas, my dear friend and brother and husband <laughs> is, um, he fell off and he's not able to come back in. But anyway, um, he's going to come back. I can tell you right now, he will come back so we can, you know, continue from where we stopped. So until I come your way again, if you're a new person here, please subscribe. Yes, I have no shame in my game. Subscribe to my channel. <laughs> subscribe, subscribe and uh, leave your comments and, um, you know, keep supporting me. Share the videos. Please share the videos. And I'm going to be having more guests. Believe you me, they're going to be coming, more and more of them. They're reaching out to me and I'm like, okay, I'm just going to go ahead and do this. You know, I've been putting it up for a little bit, but you know what? I'm embracing my Nollywood roots. So there you have it. Go figure. So um, again, follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Amazon Superstar. Um, you can follow and like my page. On Facebook, it's called Ameze Ameze. And my podcast is Ameze Live. Thank you very much. Thank you for the support. Thank you for the love. Thank you for tuning in. So until I come your way again, be blessed, be kind, be safe.